everyone and welcome back to Corpse Party D2 Depths of Despair Nightmare Edition. So let us continue. We're going one way or another, no matter how long it takes. Okay, so we're going to take this thingy. Among the books are medical supplies, however, a dark red substance coats in any of the containers. I might be able to use some of these materials for the exorcism. I only sorted through the supplies and just found a piece of chalk, a packet of salt and spare candles. She's really determined to exercise these guys. Q, a memory. Huh? The shadows in the room converged into the sh and took the forms of Satoshi and Naomi. Naomi seemed hesitant to approach Satoshi, who was crying into one of the infirmary beds. Poor thing. Yuka. Naomi slowly approaches Satoshi, and certainly was written on her face. Satoshi? Why did I leave her behind? She was my little sister! Satoshi continued sobbing into the sheets. Naomi opened her mouth as if to speak, but hesitated. I'm sorry, Satoshi. I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have screamed for help. Satoshi answered her only with more sobs. Try to get some sleep, okay? We'll go see if Yoshiki and Ayumi found something. Found anything once you're ready. Uh, okay. Whose memories was this? No answer came from the dark, silent room. Well, not. Well, there, Ayumi, you've got a choice. It's either Satoshi or Naomi. And seeing as Naomi's still in the monks to live, and I'm pretty sure it's Satoshi's memory. But, because obviously this is not her memory, because in this sequence alone, we just determined she has no clue whose memories that is. And, um. She didn't know at the time that you had been killed. Again, very some different interpretations show how she dies very differently. Um, where do I go now is the question. It is a very good question. I... I don't know. Let's go this way. We shall be daring. We shall find a way. Yuka? Yuka dear, are you hanging back down here? Because if you are, please warn me. I would like to make a run for it, should you come anywhere near me. Yuka! Oh, Yuka! Yuka dear! Nice to Yuka dear! Right, she died in the... Um... Sorry. The girls die mainly... The, the death count in the girls' bathroom is terrible, I tell you. You never get the problem with the boys' bathroom. Which is ridiculous. Is it this one she came up to? I can't remember. Yes, she was in you. Nice. Yuka, I'm just going to pick up the purple sparkly. You can mention that she died in the bathroom. Maybe there's something of hers here. Check the soul. Ayumi slowly opened the door to the soul and stepped in. Why she would do that, I don't know. I mean, clearly, yeah, Yuka hangs about in here, but you know, it's the only place we got to look. Inside of the stalls were painted red with blood, indicating that it was the correct stall. Oh, tidy could indicate that several other people died in that particular stall. It didn't necessarily have to be Yuka's blood, it could have been anybody's blood. Anything here? Ayumi used her phone, to light, uh, phone light to search the stall. She was about to give up when she noticed a headband stained with blood. This must be Yuka's headband. It'd be hard to tell in the dark and also with the blood on it, but we'll just go with it. After pocketing the headband, Ayumi turned to leave the stall. However, the door seemed to be jammed shut. I wonder who's doing it. I don't have time for this. Ayumi tried to shove the door open, but it didn't budge. After a few more attempts to open the door, a strange sound came from behind Ayumi. Huh? Ayumi turned around to see the blood was spurting from the floor toilet and was increasing in pressure and falling by the second. We got a leaky floor. No! Ayumi turned around 
and started banging on the hall door in an abandoned schoolhouse. Let me out! You can, are you there? Let me out! No response came. The blood rival had reached Ayumi's ankles. Banging on the door hard, Ayumi screamed as loud as her lungs would allow. Yuka, let me go. Still no answer, the blood was almost at Ayumi's knees. Is she doing in here? Hearing a voice, Ayumi pounded on the door again. Help! I'm stuck in this stall! Footsteps echoed aside the stall. The blood level was passing Ayumi's knees and climbing up her waist. Give me a sec! Something wedged itself in the stall door and started moving. After a moment, Ayumi guessed it was a crowbar. Where the person got a crowbar from, I can't really tell you where it disappears to after, I can't tell you either. There! The door opened, the blood spilled out into the room beyond. Thank God! I'd have been drowned within a minute without help. Now you know how you could have felt. After looking back to make sure the blood flow had stopped now that the trap was ruined, Amy turned to face the rescuer. You owe her a big apology, love. Y you Is there a problem with it being me? No, I didn't expect you to help me. The girl frowned and sighed, looking away. I'm only trying to help you, Ayumi. That's why I have to find you and prevent you from attempting to exercise your friends. Ayumi grunted her teeth and shook her head. I'm going to free them and you can't convince me otherwise. The girl looked at Ayumi, a concerned frown on her face. It won't work. It can't work the way you plan to do it. I'm doing everything perfectly. It will work. Remember everybody, it will work. Oh, the irony. Didn't she say those exact words to Satoshi during the ritual in the very first? She never learns. Really, the last time you said that, another one of your friends died. How the hell did you know so much about me anyway? You died long before I was born, and you passed on right after we met. So what makes you think you understand me? Despite the intensity of Ayumi's rant, the girl seemed almost calm, or perhaps she was hiding her emotions for Ayumi's sake. Are you willing to listen this time? Ayumi grumbled with frustration at the girl's tone. Listen to what? You haven't told me anything. That's only because you aren't willing to believe me. If you listened, maybe you'd understand. I already figure out why I'm here. I don't need you to tell me. The girl's eyes went wide with surprise. Really, then why are you trying to exercise Yuka and Yoshiki? Because it's the only way they'll be able to move on. You claim to know why you're here, but you only seem what your guilt lets you see. It's not making sense. The girl frowned and looked away, a sad expression on her face. She was silent for a moment before she responded. I hate to do this to you, but you won't understand unless you come to terms with it on your own. I just hope you live long enough to realise why you're here and how you can really save your friends. The girl turned and slowly walked into the shadows, disappearing from Ayumi's sight. I can't believe her! I was so close to seeing my friends and she can't even tell me what she's talking about. I think that's everything I need. I think I should perform the exorcism in the hallway outside where this all started. There's plenty of room there, and it was the last place we all saw each other alive. Whoop. Take your time, saving. Or to stupidity, whichever works for you. Without warning, the shadows combined into figures in the hallway. Ayumi froze when she saw the figures, but slowly relaxed herself when she recognized the faces. I'll be waiting right here, so don't take too long. I know, I know, we'll make it quick. The group split up with Satoshi and his little sister heading for the bathroom while Naomi read a poster. However, you could pulse for a moment and tugged on Satoshi's sleeve. Big brother? Hmm, what is it, Yuka? You still have it, right? 